Good afternoon and welcome to Hope for the Family with Evangelist Maria Antonia Eden. We are continuing with our reading of the book, um, Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to God. We continue from where we start in our two previous sessions. We are reading about from the triumphant entry of our Lord Jesus Christ to Jerusalem to uh, his crucifixion and also is uh, resurrection and we read a couple of verses um, chapters from the book of Acts of the Apostles. Glory be to God. So let us see how far we can go this evening. We are just reading the Spirit of the Living God lead us want to reflect on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us so that we'll be reminded of how, how, how Jesus Christ suffered for us to have salvation. Amen. So we begin to appreciate what God did for us and reflect on the goodness of God, his love to us as well. That Jesus Christ actually went to that cross of Calvary just because of us. He did not do anything, he did not sin for his uh, sins, we are heaped upon him, that we may have the life we have today. Glory be to God. Let us begin to thank God and bless him as we read this passage, maybe with the scriptures today, that the world will come alive in us and through us to the people around us in the name of Jesus Christ. So that eyes will be enlightened to understand, to see and for our minds we will be new to understand what God has done for us. Glory be to God for having blessed you. Spirit of the living God, help us as we read. Help us and show us the things we need to feed on today. For man shall not be by bread and love, but of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Speak to our spirit, so that mind today. Flood us with heavenly wisdom that we begin to honor, appreciate, and worship, and, and praise God for everything that God has done for us. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, there is no mercy. We thank God the total victory we have over sin, over the course of the law, tradition, culture, for our school and communal wickedness in Jesus Christ. We bless you that through Him we have received power to become your children. We acknowledge that you are truly our God, that you have helped us, you are helping us every day. We say the praise and honor for everything you do through us and our families today in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, beginning from verse 47. Jesus arrested. Amen. When he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd, armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kissed is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it for his sword, sword reached for his sword drew it out and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. His ear. Put your, your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by thy sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled? That say it must happen in this way. At that time, Jesus said to this crowd, Am I leading a rebellion? That you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me. Every day I sat in the temple station, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted in and fled. Before the Sanhedrin, those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, distance right up to the courtyard, courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the old Sanhedrin. We are looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they put him to death. But they did not try any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am about to destroy the temple of God 
and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that the, these men, these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, in the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look now, look now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, said the answered. Then they, they spit in his face and struck him with their fist. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Christ, who hit you? Peter disowns Jesus. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You, you also be with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you are talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another girl saw him, and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again, with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them, for you, your accent gives you away. Then he began to call them curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a roster crawled. Then Peter remembered the word of Jesus. Jesus had spoken. Before the roster crawls, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Judas angst himself. Early in Matthew chapter 27, Judas angst himself. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the, to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and added him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty silver coins to the chief priest and the, end, and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is this that to us? They replied, that's your responsibility. So Judas threw the body into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's feet as a burial place for foreigners. That is why it has been called the feet of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was so fit. They took the 30 silver coins, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's feed, as the Lord commanded me. Jesus before Pilate. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is, as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by, by, by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the, to the great amazement of the governor. Now, it was the governor's custom, custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which do you, want, do you want me to release to you, Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's judge, judge seat, his wife sent him this message, Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd 
to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that, but that instant an uproar was, start, was starting, he, he took water and washed his hands in front of a crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, let this, let this blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers mocked Jesus. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into, into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They, they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hey, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. The crucifixion. The crucifixion. The crucifixion. As they were going out, they met a man from Syrian named Simeon or Simeon. Simeon. They, they met a man from Syrian named Simeon, and they forced him to carry the cross. Simon, Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were, two robbers were crucified with him one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by all insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe him in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also each insults of him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. For everything that we have just read, Jesus Christ suffered because of us. He did not sin. But everything was in the line of prophecy so that we might be saved, amen, from our sins and be translated from darkness into God's kingdom of marvelous light, amen. We thank God that Jesus Christ did not turn his back, but he went onto that cross, even when he saw the shame, the reproach, the disgrace, the rejection, that even the people that were very close to him, his disciples, Peter, they all left him because they were afraid of the people, amen. Even when Peter's ascent gave him away, that people knew that he was one of Jesus' disciples. He still denied. And the Bible said that it was keeping curses upon himself, trying to defend himself that he did not know Jesus Christ. And as Jesus said that before they, they, they rose that cross three times, you, you, you deny me. Jesus, uh, Peter was arguing and said he would never, even if everybody would deny Jesus Christ, that he would not. But he did. When you remember, it went bitterly. Amen. You remember the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We are some of us are here today, and we have turned our back against the submission of Jesus Christ and what He did for us. 
we are still denying that he's the son of the living God. We are still joining the crowd, those who crucified him, to crucify him even today. We are still even insults upon him. We are still telling God the Father that he is a liar, that he did not give us uh, salvation in Jesus Christ. We, we are doing so many things through our attitude by not acknowledging that God is God or accepting the salvation that God has given to us through his son. As we reflect on this Christmas, season, let us pray that God Almighty will touch our hearts, turn our hearts to Him. God will touch the hearts of those that are still in the world that have refused, that those hearts are added against the things of God, that God will walk with miraculously to turn them to him, their hearts to Him in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that as um, the robber, the one who humbled himself for Jesus Christ, prayed and said, Remember me. In your father's kingdom remember me that that will be our prayer that remember me we know that we may suffer for the things that we have done amen that it's righteous for us to suffer it's righteous judgment for us to suffer the things that we have done but not for someone who did nothing to suffer amen so let us humble ourselves and say jesus christ because you suffered for us everything we did our shame our reproach our sins our sicknesses our diseases all we they were all heaped on you you were flogged. You were insulted. They spat on you. They mocked you. They did everything because of us. Today we have come before you to ask for forgiveness. Remember us. Let your blood continue to speak on our behalf. We repent of all our sins. We pray that our hearts not be at the against our God or against you. That we continue to testify about your faithfulness. That the world will know that you truly came to this world to die for us. We look up today to you. Our Lord and Savior, even this day, we, we are saying that you reign forever, that there is no God as day, that you are victorious over darkness, over every kingdom of satanic kingdom, anything that ever stand against you in this world, even as they are here today. You have given us total victory over darkness. You have empowered us to, that we are the children of God. We are blessing you for what you did for us. We are thanking you. As we reflect on this day, Father, we say thank you. Thank you for the power we received to become your children. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for restoring to us the joy of our salvation. Thank you for the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ and through him. Thank you, God Almighty, that we can proclaim your goodness to the world and bring more souls to you. Thank you, God Almighty, for the solid foundation that you have laid for us. Thank you for your living word in us. Thank you that your word will produce the fruit of righteousness in each one of us. We believe and we feed on your word in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you that Jesus Christ is not just the king of the Jews, but the king of the entire world. That is that his kingdom we have no end. There's no end to his kingdom. Glory be to Jesus Christ, king of endless glory. Glory be to Jesus Christ. We thank you for what you have done for us. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, who is in the highest. We thank you, our Father. We bless you for everything you have done for us. We bless for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for this time that we can think about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us. Thank you, Father Lord. Thank you. That no rod of oppression will be placed upon the land you have given to us, your children. Father, those who crucified Jesus Christ, they took Simon. You did not even do anything and made him to carry that cross. That's our heart in their hearts we are to oppress. Father, we pray that our hearts don't be added against you or against our brothers and sisters, that your love will be in our hearts as we offer ourselves for you. For you love the broken and the contrite heart. We pray that blood of Jesus Christ today. We thank you, God, that he gave up his life by his own accord, that no one could take his life from him. He laid it down. We bless you for our Savior. He reigns forever. It was through him that he created this world and everything that we see today. We thank for the life he has given to us. The authority we have in his name. The power to, to cast out demons. To baptize. To heal. To do wonderful things. To teach this gospel and to represent you. Father, we say thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the church of Christ here on earth. The gate of earth shall not prevail against the church. We bless you. That the living word of God will prevail in every situation relating to us, in our government, in our families, in all our institutions, in the body of Christ and the harvest field. We say, Father, thank you. It's like unto you, there's no God as thee. Thank you for a time, O Lord God, to reflect on our salvation and what was, what, our 
our salvation was achieved. A precious gift, your son, the blood of your son. It was through that blood that we have been redeemed. We know it and we have seen so. Glory be to your name, O oh Lord God. Glory be to your name for what you have done for us. We thank you for your faithfulness to us, for your love. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord God bring blessed be our God. May the rock of our salvation be exalted. May God be exalted in our lives today in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, my dear sister, Mrs. Gladys, Cynthia K. Gloria. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless your family, family and your ministry. Thank you, my dear brother. Pastor Godwin E. Mocker. God bless you, your family and your ministry. Thank you for calling in. We bless God for, for his faithfulness that we can come back to continue to study because we need to reflect on this. It is very important to us. That's the hope we have of eternal life. That's the assurance we have that truly we are the children of God. Glory be to God. The victory we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. See how they, they spat on him. Everything they did. Ah, they mocked him. Everyone. They mocked him. That I am. The, they said that, that he said I am the son of God. In the same way the robbers who were crucified with him also gave insults to him. They were telling him that you that saved so many. Why can't you save yourself? If you are truly the Son of God, let your Father save you. Amen. That you who are going to destroy the temple, that you, this man who said that you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. That in the same way the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him, he saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross. That let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. I doubt if they would have even believed if he came down from the cross. They would have thought that maybe it's some kind of magical whatever. But it just is the will of God for him to be commanded in that way by men to come down from the cross. He came to this world for that purpose. So he must remain on that cross. Amen. He knew what it was. As horrible as it was. He knew the agony was going to pass through. But he, he was strengthened when he prayed. He received strength to go on that cross. So no man can command him to come down. It's the voice of God that he heard. He said, everything I did was through the command of God. Because I remained in my father. Glory be to God. They could not make him to come down. Glory be to God. We thank God for everything. You see, that during the crucifixion, that I will go back again to verse 32. Matthew chapter 37, verse 32. That as they were going out, they met a man from Seren named Simon. A man that did not do anything. They saw him on the wayside. They just saw him. And the, 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 that shows you how oppressive the leaders were. There were people amongst them. They did not take one of their own people. But they saw somebody who was a foreigner, obviously. And, and, and they forced him to carry the cross. They forced him. He had no say. Carry this cross. Those, those are the people who are teaching the temple. Amen. No love in their hearts so they follow human beings. No love towards Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and towards a foreigner. They force the foreigner carry this cross, whether you like it or not. They were ready to allow the government to, re to release a, a robber, someone who did something, something wrong, so that Jesus Christ will be executed. But we know it's a plan of God. And something else that caught out uh, that came uh, Judas is current, who was in the line of prophecy that he would be the one that would betray Jesus Christ. He did what was prophesied, uh, he prophesied uh, about him. But you see, he, 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 he was filled with remorse. He became very sorrowful of what he did when he saw that Jesus Christ was arrested and was uh, uh, led to crucifixion. He was so sorrowful that he came. And he returned the money to the elders, but they refused to take the money from him. He threw it to the temple and left. He went to hang himself. He went to hang himself. So let us just, while we still have time, with a sound mind that God has given to us to make good decisions, let us pray that the Spirit of God will lead us in the, everything that we do. That we don't get to a stage where we do things that we cannot overturn. We know that this man was in the line of prophecy. We thank God that we are not in that position, where he was. Amen. Who can question God?
But he went and he killed himself. He could not overturn anything. He threw that money away. Some people are enjoying evil money. They do not even have the conscience of Judas eating carrots to say, oh, why am I doing this to, the, to God's children as a leader in my nation? Why am I doing this? They're just enjoying it. Enjoying what they are doing. Enjoying their evil works. Judas has shown, showed, showed that example here. He threw the money away. I don't need this money. He was filled with remorse. Amen. And he went, what did he do? He went to hang himself. We pray that that will not be our portion in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. And the first thing that I'm going back again to uh, Simon that was uh, forced to carry the, 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 the that, that was forced to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with God, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Everything as was said by the prophets, by casting lots. They kept watch over him. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. I just came back from a service, a very... I said this from the Roman Catholic Church a couple of minutes ago. Uh, this passage was read from the book of John. The entire thing was read uh, the, uh, leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And the Jews did not like the governor in that passage that we read from John, the book, well, because we're coming to John, it was the governor that wrote it, the king of the Jews. And the people did not like it. They wanted the governor to change it. And the governor said, I've written what I've written. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to change it. It is there. What I've written. Amen? So it is. Not just the king of the Jews. Our king. The king of the entire world. Glory be to God. The king of the entire world. The king that God gave to us. The God who loves us so much. There are two robbers who are crucified with him. One on his right and one on his left. Those who pass by. called insults at him. Shaking their heads. As if it was a reproach, a shame to the humanity. Someone that they did not want, shaking their heads at the savior of the world. You are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself, come down from the cross if you are the son of God. But as the scripture told us, Jesus Christ was talking about the temple, the living the body, his temple, a man that will die and in, in three days. You will be God will resurrect him from the dead. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to stop here today. We continue with the death of Jesus Christ tomorrow. We read that tomorrow. Amen. And conclude what we are trying to do today. Uh, the resolution of morning. We continue. Then we read Acts chapter 1 and 2. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord brings, blessed be our God, may the rock of our salvation be exalted. May the word of God produce the fruit of righteousness in us. May we apply the future principles we are learning in our daily living and be better people for our God. People who truly have the love of God in, in our hearts for humanity. People who fear God. That we, we choose to fear God because it's our God. We choose to honor Him. We accept the fact that God has given us salvation in Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. That we cannot have a relationship with God the Father when we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. So at this time, let us begin to thank God and proclaim this gospel with all the power that God has given to us, with all the wisdom we have, with the sound mind we have. Amen. Without fear, so that more people we accept the gospel, we accept the salvation of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.